Hi, I'm Ali Patterson, and welcome to The RegTech Show. This week, we've teamed up with SmartStream to look at how they're helping banks really utilize their data to aid the digitization process. As well as the SmartStream team, we sat down with Credit Agricole and Societe Generale to get their perspective on big data. So firstly, we caught up with Daryl Twiggs from SmartStream. What are some of the biggest challenges that banks are really facing on a day-to-day -day level at the moment? Well, it continues to be recovery from the financial crisis. Uh, return on earnings is still low. Um, it really hasn't um, grown in the way that banks would like to see their businesses operating. So this makes a, a large focus on their operating costs, uh, how they can increase their revenues, how they can develop new businesses and, and provide greater services for which they can then charge their, their customers. So that remains the key piece, um, trying to improve the return on earnings. And for us, there's a huge focus on rationalising operations, reducing the cost of operations. Um, and our, many of our clients are going through significant process re-engineering projects where they previously had decentralised operations and they're centralising that, they're rationalising the number of solutions that they're using uh, and of course the number of people that are required uh, to be able to move them from mundane labour orientated tasks um, to actually then be able to use their skills and knowledge to attract more and more business and to grow their businesses. Now, it's clear to me that banks are economising and moving to digitisation and becoming more digital banks. But I wanted to know, particularly on the corporate side, how much that hinges on relevant data. Would you say that the data quality requirements have increased and become more specific following a lot of automation and ro robots looking at the data? Absolutely. Um, so the data quality has become paramount. Um, and, and the, the robots that, that you're talking about in this instance are actually automated trading um, algorithms. So automated trading has hap been happening, I think, pretty much um, almost for 20 years now. I think the first instances started in the, uh, in, in the late 90s. And, and, and there was a big sort of growth to the point where actually um, the Goldman CFO, I think, at one of their recent sort of financial announcements came out and said, 10, 15 years ago, we had hundreds of people on our equity desk um, in the US um, trading, um, and, and now we have two people trading. Um, uh, everything else is done automatically. Um, so, I mean, that is, I guess, the extreme example of robot automation in, in, in the sense that you're talking about robots. And it's something we've kind of taken for granted now. Um, but that automation absolutely has to have good quality data and, uh, and, and that's where we come in. For SmartStream um, back in 2000 we established um, and have branded transaction lifecycle management. So all of our solutions under the TLM brand uh, are formed on a single technic technical stack, I mean, a single architecture which is really very important um, so that we've got data can be used by multiple systems, can be shared uh, and accessed by our different uh, solution pieces, uh, but it also means the cost of ownership uh, is reduced. So a technical team is always required to support any software solution. Uh, with TLM, you simply really need only a single team with that specialist knowledge to support the multiple solutions. So that's the, our unique position in the, as a software vendor to our, our, our client base. Um, with a single technology, um, we're helping our clients solve the big data problem. Uh, which is you know, now if you're going to centralise your operations, you're having to provide more detailed reports uh, to the regulators. You need now to uh, basically consolidate a vast amount of different types of data uh, and reporting across all asset types. Okay, so our solutions are designed and architected to provide that capability. The data that is required for the automation is something that the banks have been building um, themselves o over the last few years because as they built the automation they realised the data quality needed to improve and they started to put teams in place to actually make the data quality adequate. Uh, and, and most organisations have built teams now that are, for the larger organisations, potentially 50 people plus. Um, so what we're doing is actually um, I guess taking that effort and, um, and uh, work that is required currently within the banks away from the banks 
doing it once, doing it well, doing it sort of on behalf of the industry and, and then actually these organisations can take the data from us rather than having to create it themselves. We sent Douglas McKenzie to speak with Credit Agricole and Societe Generale to get their take on big data. Digitalisation, if it's for the sake of bringing more information to the customer, changing the way we work with the customers. You know, everybody's been talking about APIs, for example. We've created about 600 APIs in Sogens and we're creating APIs every single day. That means that customers will obviously get more information than they were getting before. It means also we're creating blocks that we can bring to the customers without having to get them all of what is not important for them. So it does change the way we do work with our customers and it does change what we can bring to them. And obviously the goal is to bring more information, more transparency, more products to them. And that's exactly what we're building through digitalizations. I just take a, a, an example to trade and transaction banking. Uh, today, uh, much of the biggest transactions, many of them, they are based on documents. Definitely, you need to di digitalize documents. But the challenge we have ahead of us, it's very simple to say, okay, let's go and digitalize the documents. But meanwhile, you have DLT uh, technology. You have the blockchain technology coming. Is the market going straight to blockchain solution? Or is it going first to digitalization and then to the blockchain? So this is, this is the type of challenges that we are facing. But don't forget, it's not just customers for new products, it's also customers for more safety. And that also is being taken into account by making sure that, for example, in our processes, we also put some innovations into it. Uh, and innovations that I would mention to you, for example, is the capacity that we do have to basically bring together uh, the best of fingerprint recognition, eye recognition, stuff like that. And we're testing that actually not with our customer, we're testing that for us with, with our operations so that anybody getting into SWIFT messages, SWIFT capabilities is actually fully recognized by his own name and persons through that sort of technology. So we're testing it for us before obviously offering it to our customers. So that goes in the right direction to us. Safety is important for our customers, it's important for us. And our credit agricole working very strongly to in increase their amount that they're using of AI and in terms of uh, machine learning? Yes, for sure. And again, machine learning is a way to, to really speed up. I, I, I mentioned to you digitalization. How do you digitalize documents? You need machine learning. Because the machine learning will help you to save time in the way you digitalize and speed up the process and make it more efficient. With concerns about data privacy and GDPR just around the corner, there's a huge amount of opportunities in data that could potentially be hampered by regulation. So I wanted to see from SmartStream how confident they are, firstly in providing banks like those we've seen today with data solutions, which could pave the way for even more digitization. From our perspective, um, the users of our software have the greatest knowledge of how, uh, what their data context is, how they use that data and the implications of that data. Um, and we're moving our solutions to be able to use that intelligence through uh, development of machine learning, exercises, artificial intelligence on key points, uh, and actually bringing together pieces of, in, uh, of different data um, to, to provide uh, event-driven operations, um, which will help them to make their complete operation more efficient but also in bringing that data together and analysing it at the lowest detail using the software solutions we have in play, they're able to identify common root causes of error, common root causes of inefficiency and drive programmes to actually improve those. And once you've improved those from a holistic process point of view, they don't reoccur. Don't forget, the data collected on our customers is not now. It has always been the case. We were viewed as the trusted advisor by our customers. Trusted advisor means two things. The data we collect on them stays with us. It's not being split around the country, it's not being split around the customers, it's not being split around anyone outside of the banking industry. That's what the customer sees in us, trust and reliability on holding that information within what I would say a contained environment. It's very important for our customers, it's very important for us. At the same time, it's obvious that the tons of information we have on our customer must serve our customers, i.e. we need to help him in the way of certain pattern that we've seen with him, 
Some might be appropriate, some might not be as much as appropriate. So we certainly want to use that data as much as possible, but for our one only goal, the advantage of our customers, not the advantage of others outside of our banking industry that could use our data. So we are absolutely not in the process of you know, looking at what some industries have done, collecting data, selling that information to anybody else in the market. That's not the point today. We want to remain the trusted advisor of our customers, and that's critical to our industry and to the business we do with them. Could you give an example where you've actually been able to look at, or your solution to be able to look at a, a piece of information and draw something that the bank can then use to look at their well, operations? It's quite widespread across our solutions um, because we're, we're founding on like a workflow engine, uh, rules-based, and, and, and now laying analytics on top of that. Uh, so in the reconciliation space, uh, we provide a distribution of the uh, types of error that can possibly occur within the data. Okay, so we were almost into the uh, typical Gaussian distribution, uh, which identifies increasing levels of probability that data is incorrect or there's an issue. Uh, and we automate the workflow process so that that data doesn't have to be analysed, looked at by uh, a reconciliations operator. It goes directly to the business who have that responsibility so that they are able to understand this is your problem, resolve it, and that will close the loop on, on the exception. We moved that principle into, for example, our intraday liquidity cash management solutions, which are, are reconciling at the back end um, what the bank thinks is going to settle and what has settled and identifying unique occurrences or irregular occurrences um, down at the individual transaction level. And again, implementing then uh, an event-driven workflow process to take an action to resolve that problem, and particularly intraday, has become increasingly important um, it's part of the Basel III um, directive uh, to, to implement a system which will monitor a, a bank's liquidity. And after all, a bank needs liquidity, otherwise they go out of business, um, at which Lehman Brothers unfortunately suffered back in the day. So using the reconciliations and the analytics, we understand exactly what the liquidity of the bank is at any second. And by identifying uh, using our statistical analysis, uh, that either an irregular occurrence has occurred, there's a trend in the market, someone, an agent isn't paying or an agent is throttling payments, or that indeed that an unexpected deposit has been made, um, we're able to alert uh, the business to take an action uh, within the second. So it's all about understanding that data, the consequences of that data, understanding how you statistically un distribute the data across the, um, uh, any um, quartile of time. Um, to be able to identify that something is, needs an action to be taken and then automate that flow of inf information to the right person. On the next episode of the RegTech Show, we take a look at the cybersecurity aspect of GDPR.